Alleluia, Christ is risen. us pray. O God, for our redemption, didst give thine only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection hast delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. first lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around, and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O
In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. It was so joyful. This is our joyful Easter greeting. We've brought back those alleluias after fasting from them all of Lent. All because Jesus has been raised from the dead. Because without the resurrection, a joyful alleluia does not exist. And so it begs the question, why so much joy? What about the resurrection brings such wonderful joy? I mean, aren't we talking about something that happened to one person a long time ago? Why should what happened some 2,000 years ago across an ocean bring joy to us here, especially joy to anxious and hurting hearts? Sometimes I think we make the mistake of believing that what we are celebrating this morning is our Lord's resurrection. Now, don't get me, take me the wrong way. I stand firmly in the center of our Orthodox traditional, traditional Christian belief. Our Lord was raised bodily from the dead. And as the earthquake witnessed in Matthew's Gospel, the world has been shaken from its foundations and will never ever be the same. So I'm not saying that Jesus was not raised from the dead. But I do think that some of us gather to celebrate what happened to him 2,000 years ago, and as a result, we miss the point entirely. That is what I'm saying. The reason for our joy this morning it's not so much that our Lord was raised after being killed, and we're just so glad that He's alive and He's okay. You see, our Lord never needed a resurrection. The eternal Son of God, the eternal Logos, the eternal Word of God, has never known anything but eternal life. There was never a time when He was not. He has never been in need of being raised from the dead. That's the beautiful piece of this whole story that we've been living for this entire Christian year. The one who needed no resurrection. The one who knew no sin. The one who needed no cleansing bath. Out of His great love for us, put on our sinful flesh the entirety of of our humanity. John Donne said it beautifully when he said, He who, who cannot sin, and yet all sin must he bear. He who cannot die, yet cannot choose but to die. You see, the joy that radiates from the empty tomb and into every gathering of Christians, including this one, all over the world this day, is not so much because our Lord was raised. It is because of that which He took upon Himself from the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary was raised. Namely, our humanity. God didn't need it and doesn't need a resurrection. It is human beings who need to be raised from the death of sin. And the good news of the gospel, God literally pitched His tent with us. He put on flesh and dwelled among us. Why? Because He knows that we need help. Because He knows that we are in sin that we are in darkness, that we were enslaved to evil and destined for death and hell. God knows that we have no power in ourselves to save ourselves. So He did for us what we absolutely have no power to do ourselves. As Father Tim preached so beautifully on Good Friday, when Jesus said, 
it is finished. Just before he gave up the ghost, what he meant is, it is fulfilled. Your debt is paid in full. Tetelestai is the Greek word. It comes from the root word teleo, and that means to fulfill, to bring to a complete end, to accomplish, or in the world of economics, to pay the debt in full. So there is nothing on this Easter morning that needs be done. Salvation has been accomplished. The debt is paid. Humanity is free. Early in the morning on Good Friday, when I sat with our Lord at the altar of repose, I was moved to tears when I prayed these words. This, dear Jesus, is what I am. Weak, disfigured, broken-hearted, and guilty. And where then can I go? For you have the words of eternal life. You promise that there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. You insist that you come to call sinners, not the righteous. You say to the woman weeping at your feet, your sins are forgiven you. To the thief hanging on the cross next to yours, today you will be with me in paradise. Guilty as I am, you call me here and prepare a place for me at your table and welcome my feeble prayer. And so I am sorry for all that I have done and left undone. I ask forgiveness and trust your promise that it is mine. It is not the resurrection of the righteous that we celebrate this morning. It is the resurrection of those who were dead. It is the resurrection not of the well, but of the sick. That is what today is about. The reason for our great joy is because Jesus has been raised from the dead. Now humanity is raised from the dead. Adam and Eve have been yanked up from their graves. The chains and gate of hell and death has been broken and shattered into a million pieces. John Chrysostom said, Hell received a human body, but it encountered God. Hell received earth and was confronted by heaven. All that you have experienced this Holy Week and during the Triduum has not been for our Lord's own benefit. He didn't need it. It was for your benefit. It was for my benefit. That's the good news. No person can be too far gone, can be too dirty to pass through God's cleansing bath. If you feel unworthy, dirty, unloved, unwelcomed, unfulfilled, unsatisfied, in darkness, Anxious, afraid, lonely, guess what? This good news of Easter is precisely for you. God has already done everything that needs to be done. It is finished. The debt is paid in full. All that remains is your cooperation, your yes to God, your trust in the good news that Jesus is enough. Accept what He has accomplished on your behalf. Die with Him in His death to sin and all that it represents. By dying with Him, rise then with Him to the newness of life. So that, as Paul said to the Colossians, when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, there you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Our joyful hallelujahs resound today 
Because in and through our Lord Jesus, we are raised from the death of sin to the new life of grace and holiness. If you have not yet said yes to God's generous offer of grace, mercy, forgiveness, love, restoration, joy, and true satisfaction, today is as good a day as there has ever been for a sinner to be welcomed home. If your joy has been stifled by the devil for too long, Jesus stands with open arms, those wounds still visible, to welcome you back home, to renew your faith in Him. And if there's someone here today that wants to say yes to Jesus for the first time and wants to be baptized, or someone who wants to renew their faith in Him and recommit themselves to Christ, when it's time for communion and you come forward, just let me or Father Tim know we'll happily stop and pray for you right there. And we'll work with you towards baptism come the Feast of Pentecost in 50 days or to renew your baptismal vows. That's what today's about. It's for us. Today the reason for our uncontainable joy is because of the resurrection of sinful humans from death to newness of life. We who, like the prodigal, were dead are now alive. We who were lost have been found. Therefore, our Heavenly Father has killed the fatted calf, and He invites us to celebrate with Him and all the heavenly host, because it is finished, and Jesus is enough. Alleluia. Christ is risen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. serve you, that your name may be glorified. 
fairest of the glorious and ever blessed Virgin Mary, and for all your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. Hmm. Oh, oh God, who for the redemption of our O God, who for our redemption didst give thine only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection hast delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so today daily to sin, to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through the same thy Son, Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. The earth trembled and was still when God arose to judgment. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, but chiefly are we bound to praise Thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and hath taken away the sin of the world who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, All glory be to Thee, O Lord our God, for that Thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in Thine own image, and of Thy tender mercy didst send Thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon Him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in His holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until His coming again. For in the night in which He was betrayed, He took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is My body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. My Lord and my God. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty. Throughout all ages, world without end, And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, preserve my soul unto everlasting life. Lord, 
Jesus Christ, preserve my soul to the last man.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.